we keep coming back to this topic of relationships after awakening because i think it is quite a popular topic and i get numerous questions on my email regarding this and of course you know it is uh, it is understandable because life is in fact all about relationships but you see the nature of our relationships with the other changes after spiritual awakening because the illusory character or me is not so solid after awakening as it is before so when the me which is an image is not that solid even the other which is also an image is not that solid but let me make one thing clear that when i talk of harmony in relationships that does not mean that relationships after awakening are always going to be positive that is a misunderstanding of the concept the relationships will continue to be as before because people do not change in fact the basic nature of the person also does not change after awakening because the awakening is the vision or direct knowledge of the absence of objects which includes the person but when the person comes back and the person does come back after awakening because it is the nature of this duality without that there is no experiencing without that there is no personal perspective you you need that image so awakening does not kill the images but it it does reduce the grasping of the images what usually happens is that you become very selective in your association with people after awakening let's use awakening as a concept for the time being there is no such thing as personal awakening by the way awakening is simply the knowledge that all there is is this and nothing else so the perceived me you and the objects everything is an object so everything is apparently happening happening to no one so moving from that point forward we become the object me becomes selective in dealing with people because there has been an experience of peace of deep peace so one does not deliberately get involved in the drama of life now while we may empathize with people we may even offer them advice if they ask for it there is never a concern that the other person should follow the advice or the other person should change because i told them to change that concern is not there anymore you simply tell them you give them advice based on whatever you think is necessary and then leave it at that so when a friend of mine or my children ask for an advice i give them an advice say for example if my children ask me papa is this healthy food to eat so if the food is fresh organic and if the food is raw in good quality 
I would tell them that yes, this is good food. If it is packed, if the food contains a lot of preservatives, then I will tell them no, this is not something that I would eat. But after that, they still may end up eating the packed food. But usually I am not concerned with that. What happens with the ego mind is that it starts creating this picture of a future possibility. Oh my God, what will happen if my kids don't eat right? If I don't set my family the correct way right now, everybody is doomed. Then everybody will just, you know, face horrible consequences in the future. That concern is usually of the ego. That concern is not for the other. That concern is about the ego that people should listen to me. I am right because I have done a lot of research on this, that, everything. I have seen so many documentaries, listened to so many podcasts. Therefore, we have to eat fresh food. We have to be uh, polite all the time. We have to be like this, be like that. The concern with all of that begins to dissolve. You may still follow a particular pattern in your life, but you don't force others to follow the same pattern. So this is one thing. Then another thing is that you are going to end a lot of friendships and relationships. Either you will end them or they will fall apart because you don't feel the need to push yourself to sustain a relationship. The relationship has to be a balance of give and take. Now if it is only give, give, give and no receiving, then you are going to become resentful. And you know all of that. So having seen the love, the unconditional love of infinity, you don't run after the petty love of... You don't run after pettiness. You don't run after temporary love. Yes, it is human conditioning to crave humanly love. But... It is completely understood and accepted that not all the time that is going to be fulfilled. And even in the unfulfillment, there is harmony. And that is the harmony that I talk about. Think of this, my hand. Now if I scratch it, now if my scratching of this hand is gentle, I am pretty much okay with it. If it is light, if my hand is, the other hand on the, on the one hand is just gently tingling, then there is a pleasurable sensation. But if I increase the pressure and I scratch the hand, okay, if I scratch it like this, then that is pain. But you see the pleasure, the neutral feeling and the heaviness they are, these three are not separate. They are one and the same. Similarly, after awakening, things are seen in a very neutral and natural perspective. So conditions change. Sometimes there is pain and sometimes there is pleasure. Sometimes there is pleasure of making new associations, new relationships and sometimes there is pain of breaking up of relationships. But there is always a neutral place in the middle which is your being. And what is witnessed in the awakening is that neutral place of being which is available here and now as this. In that context, the conceptual thought of my being a separate person feels heavy. The being feels light. However, they are not two. 
they are one and the same. The being flows in one direction. Association with that direction creates pain, conceptually speaking. And same being flows in another direction. And association with that feels pleasure. But your most natural state is this awareness, which is simply here and now. There's nothing more to it. There's nothing less to it. It is the most ordinary feeling, most natural feeling. So there is nothing special about spiritual awakening other than that, that it always brings you back to this now. So you're not all that concerned with what is happening relationship-wise. You see, in the world of duality and relationships, the dramas are never ending. So, having glimpsed the reality, you stop doing firefighting. You stop extinguishing fires. You are not concerned with that. Of course, you communicate your concern to people. Nothing stops you from doing that. But you are not concerned. Sometimes this may come across as being a bit selfish, uncaring, unconcerned. But you see, this is the highest act of selflessness when you take care of yourself. Because when you are in your most natural and peaceful place, when you are content with what you already have, then you are in a very, your aura is very calming then you don't even have to do anything. You just exude peace and calmness. So even when people come and sit beside you without speaking a word, you can sense their energy. Because nothing is being tried, uh, you know, it's nothing that they're trying to enforce on you. Be this way, be the, that way. Of course, there are some people who claim that they have seen visions and that that is what they dub as spiritual awakening. But visions by themselves mean nothing because it is all in the domain of mind. You have not seen anything new. You have formed a content in your mind in that awakening, whether it is a vision of God or goddesses or mother or whatever you want but it is coming from your own knowledge, from the own memory, from the own accumulations of the past. It is just taking up new shape, shapes and new form. The true awakening is the illumination of, the, of that, of this, where the experience is taking place. And there is nothing special or ordinary about this. It is just the way it is. It is just the most ordinary experience or non-experience, if you want to call it. That which illumines everything and is self-luminous and is one with what it illumines is pure consciousness. But when the identification happens when, with the limited, that is when th things are seen from the perspective of mind-body organism, things appear to be separate. And in that separation, we think that others are the doers of their actions and that we also are the doers of our actions. And then we hold others accountable we also at the same time create a lot of shame and guilt for ourselves. So this whole dynamic keeps playing out. It repeatedly plays out. It is a never-ending loop of pain and pleasure. They did this. They did that. I didn't like it. I did this. I did that. I didn't like it. 
of course it is not to say that you use this concept as an excuse to do what you want or allow others to push you that is not the message here the message simply is this that all that is happening is this and there is nothing apart from this and that is what awakening is but you see when the sense of personal identification is strong the sense of separation is also strong and then we see people as separate so we are always concerned we create a lot of drama even ourselves i want to change i want to become better i want to be a good person good human being Nisargadatta Maharaj said that truth is not a reward for good behavior it is not that you will attain godliness by being truthful and honest god is your own essence god is this simply this not an object a separate object in manifest manifestation with special powers and privileges and this the ordinariness of this cannot be made any sense of you cannot make any sense of why things happen the way they happen all you can do from your end is that you can accept whatever is happening the way it is happening and that is spiritual awakening so there is a harmony in disharmony now i am not playing with words here if as i mentioned there are three levels of experiences where you know when i apply pressure on my hand i experience pain and when i uh, rub one hand over the other with a feather like touch then i experience pleasure so the pain and pleasure depends on the pressure and that is the differentiation that the mind makes based on sensations but in every sensation there is the reality of now so you know when this happens when this happens you stop seeing people as good or bad you just see things and phenomena as happenings and yes you are going to cut down a lot of relationships because you have seen peace and then you do not want drama you do not want involvement in those things so your grasp towards the material objects towards the objects of the world towards concepts that begins to loosen you may still react to situations to that is a part of human conditioning you cannot avoid that but at the same time you are not much concerned that oh if i do this that will happen oh they wish me on my birthday if i don't wish them then they will not speak to me yes some people will not speak to you but you won't be concerned much concerned because that does not determine the quality of your relationship missing an anniversary or forgetting to wish someone on one particular day does not define the quality of your relationship with them the understanding has to be much deeper i forget to wish many people <laughs> on birthdays i just can't remember all of that and i don't want to keep a track in my smartphone or in in my uh, list book but yes when they call me i'm there when they want my presence i offer it to them unconditionally that is something i do not dilute 
I do not give advice unless asked. I do not talk about non-duality or spiritual concepts to many people. I just sit with them. I observe them. It is all about sharing the presence. And it is also about mutual energetic exchange, which has to be in a balance. Yes, there are some people I do not get along with. And there is no um, compulsion in me to get along with them. Uh, yes, if I meet them, I do greet them politely. And I answer. But at the same time, it is not that I have to invest in that relationship. If I am constantly investing in that relationship and there is no reciprocity from the other end, if the other person cannot see eye to an eye, then I usually let go of that relationship. There is no resentment towards that person. There is no hatred towards anybody. But yes, there is an energetic mismatch. When I was working in the corporate sector, I would deliberately force myself to sit with people, to sit with the bosses who would endlessly talk about profit and loss and money making and startups and smartphones and this and that. I never enjoyed that conversation. But since I identified myself as the limited entity, I thought that to climb the corporate ladder, I should be in association with this, with these people. So I forced myself to sit. I forced myself to speak. I forced myself to give an impression to them so that I could rise up in the corporate ladder, so that I could look good in their eyes. And even in other relationships, I did the same. I would try to be a good person, a better person. I would try to do for them so that they appreciate my efforts. But you see, somewhere in this process, you lose your soul. You completely lose yourself. And it creates a lot more pain. It's, it's the most painful way to live. With awakening, that compulsion fades away. You don't speak if you don't feel like speaking. You speak your mind. Without being much concerned what the other will think of it, you speak your truth, whatever your truth is there in that moment. You are not afraid to express your feelings. You don't fear that your vulnerability will be exploited. You, have, you don't have that fear after awakening. That if you open up, that the other person who may have narcissistic tendencies may use those points to attack you. You don't have that. Even if they do attack you, you know how to shut them down. You don't do any energetic exchange with such people. Because you are rooted in the presence. The presence becomes your reality. Presence which is illuminating all of this. And not the content. There is no person over there who is sitting as a narcissist. Narcissism is an image. It's a flux which keeps changing. So unpredictability reactivity, all of that happens and you know how to block that. So yes, some relationships will fade away because then you don't feel the need to tolerate nonsense from anybody. But at the same time, you don't create that kind of resentfulness for that person. 
बिकॉज देर इज नो पर्सन ओवर देयर यू डोंट सी अ पर्सन इट इज अ कंडीशन माइंड एंड इट इज नॉट दैट दैट पर्सन चोज टू बी लाइक दिस दैट ही डेलिबरेटली हर्ट यू दैट पर्सन हिमसेल्फ इज इन पेन बिकॉज देर इज एन आइडेंटिफिकेशन देयर विद एन इमेज विच इज पेनफुल सो यू सी दैट एंड यू नो वेल एनाफ हाउ टू प्रोटेक्ट योर सेल्फ and then coming to the final concept which is of the dark night of the soul now this is something people get a lot concerned about because it is the most painful most unbearable thing and the pain comes from this confusion this mind constantly sometimes believing that the mind has attained something all the bliss it experiences all the ecstasy and other times it feels like it is in deep hell so conceptually speaking you are moving between hell and heaven all the time marked in eternal confusion you are worried about yourself where am i moving am i on the right path am i on the wrong path am i with the god or am i with the devil there are no two so a lot of people say what what do i do about this and i ask them who wants to do anything about what there is nothing you can do because you are not the doer it is all a happening of course if if something gives you physical issues or psychological trauma i tell people that by all means go to therapy talk to somebody or do whatever you you think will help you in the moment but your fundamental discomfort the fundamental restlessness the fundamental despair about the dark night will not go with anything it is just the energy carrying out its own moving it in in its own way and breaking certain blocks within you it is a part the discomfort is because lot of concepts are being challenged and dissolved so the discomfort has to be there just as an example like when you go for a tooth extraction the doctor you know uh, soothes the um, gives you the painkiller or, or something to numb the nerve but that eliminates pain to quite an extent but you have to go through the discomfort of the extraction you will see the blood oozing out and all the ugliness of that process where the doctor uses the tongs to you know just pull the tooth so there is no avoiding that but once you accept it then the journey the 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 the, the dark night of the soul does become a little easier i remember when i was getting my molars extracted at one point i just gave up i said okay do whatever you want to do and i was looking directly through and through into this pain now i am not suggesting that you should also do that <laughs> that it is not th- that way but in my case that happened and i was looking directly into the pain and somehow there was no pain when you are completely still when you are rooted in the now in this which is giving rise to everything every phenomenon you see that there is actually nothing happening everything is an appearance 
and it is appearing from that nothingness and it is going back into that nothingness so there is no solidity to anything so what seems like the discomfort of the dark night of the soul is actually an arising the peace is embedded in that discomfort now this is a very difficult concept for many to grasp you say that but i am anxious if i am anxious my relationships are falling apart i am not doing anything i am just wasting my life these concerns are always there but if you completely surrender to it and let whatever happens happen then a lot of pain gets reduced but yes there will be a fundamental dis- discomfort with the dark night of the soul which cannot be avoided in fact any attempt to avoid the pain of the dark night of the soul is going to create more suffering but your own being is your place of rest and calm it is your refuge so there is always an opportunity to come back to this here and now so no matter what is happening in your life turbulent relationships or financial mess or whatever this is where you come back this which illumines everything it is your place of rest it is what you are so to sum up yes relationships do go change after spiritual awakening and because not because the relationship the the events in the relationship change but your own perception of how you see relationships that changes so your own peace your own well being is of fundamental importance to you because you cannot do anything for another you cannot help another unless and until you well know yourself and your primary concern is with that first with you know compassion begins with oneself first if you are not compassionate towards yourself you are not going to be compassionate to anybody in this world you can only give what you have you cannot give what you don't have so first see that place of love within yourself then you won't even have to give anything automatically the love will flow it will flow into everything even into the dark night of the soul a recognition of love recognition of wholeness is the dissolution of the dark night of the soul and the individual is not in control of that there is nothing you can do about it other than to see it the way it is happening harmony in relationships no in appearances it will always be up and down some relationships will dissolve some you will break some other people will move away from you sometimes there will be disagreements but in all of this happening in all of this there is an underlying peace to everything that peace becomes the reality the peace of being so you not you you don't get caught up in the drama of life the never ending drama you see the loop how it is all operating same things same situations over and over happening people don't change the change happens in some people but they don't change by your doing anything so when you accept that you stop trying to change people and you just live you start living fully
you start enjoying simpler things in life writing reading talking to people meeting new people visiting new places traveling eating good food the simplicity of life not the grandiose version of life acquiring this attaining this my financials should be the best my relationships should be the best all those ideas begin to dissolve there is an acceptance of what is the unaltered and unpredictable flow of life is accepted the way it is trying to change what is to what should or should not be is suffering is pain so that's why i say in that context be selfish first put all your attention towards yourself not that that is going to change you or anything but yes it may give you a different perspective to life and once you discover the place of love within yourself as yourself then that is how you see everything else you see everything else as this interconnected phenomena nothing exists independently it is all connected we are all connected the pleasure pain the the disagreements and the agreements in relationships it is all one connected interconnected phenomena it is part of one movement